Lloyd Vance does a great job covering the NFL. Of course, a contributor for NFL Network, kind enough to join me on a Monday where I thought it was going to be a um, a somber, I was going to say one of those half-black Mondays with some uh, firings in the NFL. I guess we'll wait. Listen, if McAdoo's in his press conference, if he's on his conference call five, we know that he's safe for today. <laughs> I, I tell you, Q, you and I were talking off the air, and, and, you're, and you're correct. It, it, it's just a matter of time for McAdoo. He just looks very lost. I watched a lot of that game, and, and the Niners play with a lot of fire, and you can just see that the Giants are very lost as a team. Yeah, and you know, it's amazing. Have you ever seen a team, <clears throat> and I don't know if you start to really question the talent. It's not the offense. It's the defense. But you've covered the NFL for a very long time. Can you recall guys that have flat out just they've quit? I mean, they flat out, they don't want any part of playing defense, some of these guys. And you know who they are, Jenkins, Apple. You know, Collins hasn't had a very good year, but they flat out quit. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, I covered that Eagles team, Andy Reid, last season. It was a very ugly season. Yep. It kind of reminds me of this. The confluence of stuff's just all around the team and a lot of it negative, and they just couldn't overcome it. And, and you know, after a while, you got to wipe, wipe the slate clean. McAdoo, this is only his second season, but he just – clearly was not the right choice. And let's not forget Jerry Reese and all this, the general manager. He helped build this team. I know he has some, some Lombardi trophies in his case, but I think a lot of it had to do with Ernie Acorsi and the job he did before him. So uh, I think you're probably going to have to get rid of both of them and maybe start looking for that guy to groom behind Eli Manning. I said, if anything, you know, if you're an Eagles fan, you might uh... – uh, uh, grimace a little bit thinking of the notion where maybe after the season they go after De Filippo because if they offer him a head coaching or at least want to interview him, the Eagles can't block that. And look what he's done for Carson Wentz. Yeah, he's done a tremendous job. I had a great offensive mind, a guy that's been around the game for a while as a quarterback's coach, and, and he's done a really good job in terms of just lifting up that offense. Don't also forget about Detroit Lions offense coordinator Jim Bob Cooter, another hot name out there as well as Josh McDaniels, the guy with the Patriots who's been around for a while. Uh, who's the most complete team right now in the NFC, Minnesota, the Eagles, the Rams, or the Saints? Well, that's a tough one, but when I watch the New Orleans Saints and what they've really turned this around after an 0-2 start, they've just looked tremendous in terms of just dominating football. That was a road win for them. The Buffalo Bills had not lost at home in the past, 298 yards rushing six touchdowns, which is a franchise record, and, and they have the two-headed monster going in the backfield, and Drew Brees is allowed to pick his spots instead of throwing the ball 40-plus times a game. So yep. I'd say right now the Saints are looking very good, and it could be them and the Eagles in the end. You know, I watched a Rams, uh, I watched a bunch of uh, a couple quarters of that Rams game yesterday, and then, you know, go around and watch all these games, and it's amazing what happens when you get a quarterback with a head coach that believes in him and a, and a ton of reps, and then you surround him with some speed and offensive line, especially for a young guy. Goff is playing exceptional football this year. I mean, he really is. And I think people were so quick to write this kid off last year, but he's played well this year. And, and it's a maturation process. And let's face it, you know, Jeff Fisher was concentrating on, on that defensive side of the football Sneed. Uh, hung around as the general manager, and now they've done a good job with McFay. They have a lot of skilled guys on that team, whether it's Sammy Watkins, Robert Woods, who had a great game yesterday, and they're just spraying the football around. And, of course, it all starts with Gurley. So very dangerous team, and I'll be interested in a couple weeks when the Eagles fly out there to see it, how these two teams match up against each other because it could be a heavyweight bout. Uh, I'm just curious. You know, when you look at some of these head coaches, Marvin Lewis in Cincinnati, Hugh Jackson in Cleveland, McAdoo in New York, and then you got uh, Joseph in Denver, who just totally looks like uh, he's overwhelmed. He's in over his head. I never thought this team was going to get off the mat because I don't think they really had an inkling of who their legit starter was going to be before a uh, quarterback before the season started, and they really haven't recovered. Yeah, you have about five straight losses now for the Denver Broncos, and they're just a team that looks like they've totally lost it. They've always leaned on that defense, and that defense is just kind of, you could tell they're a little angry at the offense, and they've been carrying their side of the ball. And, you know, I, I just don't see a running game for them. Obviously, Simeon's not the answer, the answer of Brock Osweiler either. They might as well just take a look at Paxton Lynch because John Elway invested in him in the first-round pick. See if he can play or get into the Rose and Darnold uh, sweepstakes in the draft.
You know, you start to get the sense, though, Kansas City's coming off a bye. They've got the Giants. That should be a winnable game for them on the road. You've got Tennessee that, again, doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing. They won four straight. Pittsburgh, they won four straight. Doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing. But then you have Jacksonville. You know, I think if it's any other year, Jacksonville loses that game yesterday. Yeah, what a crazy game. And at the end, you have Bortles turning the football over back and forth with Phillip Rivers, and it seemed like no one wants to win that game. And then they go into overtime, and the kick is blocked. But for Lambeau, it goes over the crossbar, and they win the game. So <laughs> quality win for the Jaguars. But let's face it, this is a team that really does not have much offensive power other than Leonard Fournette. So they're going to lean on their defense, and I think in the end it will be them in Tennessee for that division. But I don't think you'll see the loser of that division make the wild card round. Did the Falcons say their season yesterday would have win against Dallas? You know, it's a win they had to ask you. And, and let's face it, Dallas limps in there uh, as a wounded animal. No Zeke Elliott and then no Tyron Smith. And they took advantage of it. That was a huge win for them. But uh, right now they're probably fighting for that wild card position. Uh, you have Caroline who's going to play tonight, probably going to be 7-3. and three, And they could probably – uh, battle at the, at the top of that division with the Saints. So right now, uh, Atlanta is trying to fight for that last wild card. But let's not forget the NFC is very competitive right now, and you have a lot of teams that could have 11-plus wins. Um, let me get you out on this. You, you saw last week with Russell Wilson, then yesterday with um, uh, Brissett with the uh, concussion protocol and how fast these guys are they're, they're you know sprinting to the sideline and they're coming out even faster. Um and once again, both those teams respectively have been under fire. Is this something where the NFL will really start to take a closer look at where even if the referee sends you off, they will maybe have another person down there on the sideline to really make sure that the protocol is being followed? Yeah, they're going to. And, and you know, you don't want to make a sham of this thing. And let's face it, with CTE and the concussion lawsuits still out there, they, they have to do the right thing. Uh, things in terms of protocol, and I was surprised watching that Russell Wilson play uh, that he <laughs> kind of did it so quickly and it was so blatant. So the NFL is definitely going to watch this. I was at a game that I covered. I remember Stuart Bradley came out and the Eagles put him back in the game, and, and everybody was all over them about that. So you know they're going around the league. They're going to show these tapes, and these players are going to have to sit out until an independent person lets them in because obviously the team, whether it's physician or, or some other guy that's taking a team paycheck wants to get their guy in the game and win the football game. Yeah, I agree 100%. All right, my friend, great stuff as always. Uh, we will talk next week. I have a feeling um, there'll be a couple of uh, head coaching positions open. <laughs> Good to you, sir. Thanks Listen, for having me on. You got it, Lloyd. Be well, pal. Lloyd Vance, uh, contributor to NFL Network.